would even run it. Thank you, Usher. You may be seated. And I would dare this morning to run the risk of being a little bit redundant. But that, that's, that's, that is not a bad thing. Because if you're really going to learn something, you really, got, you really need to be a little bit repetitious. You got to do it over and over and over again. Like I learned how to ride a bicycle by being repetitious. First time I rode it, I fell right off of it. Scarred my knees all up. But I didn't get discouraged. I got back up, got on it, and tried it again. And then I fell off several more times. But I did discover the more I tried, the more the smoother the ride got. And now I can ride without holding the handlebar. I put my hands behind my head and I just ride all over the place because it took practice. Same thing with driving a car. You, didn't, you remember when you first started driving, you run all up on the curb and all that kind of stuff? Uh, holding the steering wheel tight, and running all over things. But now you can, you're looking around, walk, talk, trying to dial your telephone, all that kind of stuff while you're talking. Now you need to stop dialing the phone, though. But, uh, but it takes repetition. That's, that's, that's what I'm uh, uh, I want to touch on some things that we already know, and then I want to move to some things we may not know. And for most of us that's been around the church for a long time, uh, everything we do is repetitious anyway. Uh, there's nothing new for us. We just uh, are reminded of things that we already know. So, one thing that has happened in America, and particularly in communities like our community, we base our, what we believe about ourselves normally is brought to us from the outside of our community and don't necessarily mean that it's in our best interest. For instance, uh, on this issue about success, we have this whole notion that success is built around the things we have in our possession. And, but the other side of that, the very system that says to us too often that we have to have this kind of car, or these kind of clothes, or this kind of house, and go to this school or that school, and depending on what you have and who, where you attend school and so forth, determines what class you're in or the level of success that you have attained. And then that same system turn around and block you from getting the job are uh, the resources so you can buy a BMW, yes. uh, buy a $300,000 house, or send your child to Harvard or Yale or Princeton, or even prepare your child so they can be ready to go to such a school. Yes. For most of the urban school, most of them, uh, most of our kids come out of urban school have to be remediated. They're, they're not ready for college. Too, unfortunately, many of them are not ready. And many of our youngsters have to spend their first year getting in college, getting ready for college, taking remedial courses so they can learn how to read, they can learn how to write, they can learn fundamental mathematical skills so they can matriculate along with the rest of the, rest of the group. That's what happens oftentimes in our, in our community. And so we need to re go back and look at what it means to success, and we need to work hard. See, work to being, being successful means that it's something you got system priorities on, and you really have to work at it. That makes sense to you? And uh, if you do, you're going to be all right. Now let me go back again and give you a, 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 an outline or a definition of one, at least I'm working on anyway, of what we need to start at least considering 
if we want to get on this path to success and we can, we can, we can uh, feel good about who we are and, and, and about what we do. We can feel real good about it. I might not have a million dollars, but I, can, I got to understand that I can be successful without having a million dollars. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now, that don't mean that, I'll, that, 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 that I'm not going to reject a million dollars when it starts coming my way. Don't, don't, don't y'all ever, you have to talk slow to, to our people because we go to extremes. Because I started talking about materialism is not the mark of success. And then we get to talk about, well, I don't need no house, I don't need no car, I don't need this. And I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't say you didn't need it, I said it's not the mark of success. I didn't say you didn't need a house, and you ought to try to get you a nice house to live in. But, but don't start talking to other people funny because they don't have a house like your house. And, and, and for black folk, for black people, it's not necessarily the house, it's the car. We, mark, we put too much emphasis on the kind of car that we drive. We black people, we, we, live, we, we can be homeless, but just give me a car. And just ride, ride. We might not have a $2 worth of gas in it. <laughs> but we got, we got to cut that foolishness out. They got to go. And uh, so let me see. This, this is what I said. You, you may or may not agree with this, but I hope you do. If not, I was telling a uh, uh, another preacher the other day, I said, one thing that I'm trying to do in our church, I'm trying to lay out some ideals and, and create a direction for our people to flow in. And then people have to take these ideals and concepts and get their hearts and minds, then shape it to fit their personality, to fit their expression. If you guide it by the Spirit, we're going to come out basically in the same place anyway. So this is what I want to say about success for us. The members of the Rose Tempers Bible Fellowship can, de can be defined as follows. Acknowledging the presence of God with us and in us. That, that ought to get you to jumping right there. Most people that go to church, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't want to expound on this right here, but I'm going to come back to this. Most people that go to church don't even know that God is in them. We look, that's, that's why we have so many problems. Because we're looking for God way out yonder. Or way up yonder. Huh? And we forget to acknowledge his presence. Now listen to what I just said with us and in us. Wow. Success for us means obeying the laws of God. Success for us means decolonizing our mind and renewing our mind. In other words, we jacked up with some ideals that's alien to who we are. You missed it. I said we, we must decolonize our mind. In other words, you got some stuff in there that got to come out. That's what Paul said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Then, then, then listen to me. Now, you don't need to be empty-headed. Because the whole lot of us, see, there's no need of cleaning up the house if you're not going to put some new stuff in there. Then he said, now, he said, but by the renewing of your Mind. I want this church to understand that your power is right here, not right here. 
Now, I got some big muscles. But the real power is right here. And everything that you see originated with a thought right here. Now, I got some bad news for some of y'all. And it might be good news for some. It depends on where you are on your journey. Whatever predicament that you're in right now, it started right there. You just didn't walk off and leave your family. You just didn't walk off and become a drunk. You didn't walk off and just start smoking dope. You just didn't jump up one day and go to the University of Texas or, or to uh, or Texas A&M or to Rice or to Harvard or Yale or to Texas A&M. You just did, it all started in here. You don't live in the community that you live in just because. And you're not going to get out. Or what if it's a bad situation? You're not going to get out until you change this. And that's the reason why our philosophy of ministry is just for you. Because we encourage you to change your mind and you will change your life. I'm going to tell you something about, about, I hate to use this kind of language, but, but y'all excuse me, you, you know what I'm talking about. I just can't find anything better right now, and I'm thinking on my feet. You won't change ghettoism till you get ghetto out of your head. And don't need you moving to memorial. It's no need of you moving to the best part of Oak Cliff, thinking that's going to change everything, because you got a ghetto mentality, you're going to turn it into a ghetto. Because <laughs> you can't help but to be what you are. And what you are is in here. Now, I know I want y'all to let these deacons and the deaconesses fool y'all this morning. They looking good. They dressed up. I ain't talking about me now. I'm talking about them. <laughs> they, they looking good this morning. Now listen to me. They looking good. But what you see on the outside is not necessarily who they are. Who they are it's about what's going on in here. Hmm? I know a lot of folk with a hundred dollar perfume on and they stink when it comes to life. Am I right or wrong? I just, that's just the way life is. And so thanks be to God. So you don't have to worry about all this other stuff. Now listen to me. Uh, one of the reasons why the, the people in the East uh, do better than we are when it comes to having peace and strength in their lives because they're not as materialistic as we are. They don't build their lives on, they don't start from the outside in, they start from the inside out. Am I making sense to you? Now we're supposed to start there. That's the reason why America has distorted the Christian faith and we have built it on what we see rather than who we are. And that's one of the things, that's when you've got to, de I told you a while ago, you've got to decolonize your mind. You've got to get these distorted views about life and even about your religion out of your head and out of your heart and get the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth should do what? All right. Here we go. So decolonizing and renewing our minds, being committed to and working to build community, 
manifesting godly character and conduct daily, living with definite purpose and principle, living life to the fullest in the present moment, working to meet our personal and community needs, and finally sharing in the control of all human activities that affect our lives. Now you're looking at a man with, that have the marks of success all written all over him or her. Let me read it for you one more time in its entirety so you can kind of get the flow of it. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, these are sort of some general principles that capture the, the whole scope of life in my estimation. Success for us can be defined as follows. Acknowledging the presence of God with us and in us, obeying the laws of God, decolonizing and renewing our minds, being committed to and working to build community, manifesting godly character and conduct daily, living with definite purpose and principle, living life to the fullest in the present moment, and finally sharing in the control of the human activities that affect our lives. If you notice, if you notice that everything that I just gave you is preceded with a participle or a, 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 a verb that, that, that says that successful people are about doing something. But you got to be about doing the right stuff. Just don't do anything. And if we have the kinds of things that we need, such as these I just named to you, now what it does is help you to develop a plan of action for your life so you can fulfill those principles. Hmm. And if you notice that most of the stuff on our list then don't cost you nothing. Most of the stuff that, 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 that see, successful people, just like I got, they got a, we have a guy, and you see him on the news every day. I'm with you. I mean, you tell me if he's successful or not. He's a millionaire, but he running around cutting up women, uh, uh, killing folk, going in the bathroom, talking about how he murdered them and all that kind of stuff, all out of his head, whacked all out. Uh, got him in jail down in Louisiana now, finally getting transported for some more crimes in in California. Now I'm going to ask you, would it, if, we, if you marked him by what he has materially, you say he's successful. Because he got more than all of us put together. I mean literally. He got more money than all of us in this auditorium put together. And in the eyes of the, of, of, of the way the system is set up, you would say he's successful. And then you start looking at yourself, talking about, well, I'm, I want what he, I want to be like, I want, I'm going to have what he has. Then, do you? <laughs> do you really want to be like him? <laughs> and plus the fact you got to understand that most of the old money in the United States of America can be traced back to slavery. Do you want to be like them? Wall Street. See, you didn't know that. Wall Street, right in New York, right now. You don't even know the history of how it got to be named Wall Street. Because that wall was up there, that, that the first stock that was traded on Wall Street was black folk. That's where the money is. That, that mayor out there in New York that's giving black folks hell, his, his wealth and his family's wealth was built on slavery. You see, success has more to do with righteousness and justice than it does with about money. Now, when you are a righteous and a just person, you will handle your money right, and you will get it right. Yeah. 
That's not what I came to talk about. Well, sometimes I get carried away when I start talking about stuff like that. Now I'm going to give you, let, let me, don't, don't get too attached to things, people. Because one of the ways you blow, there's nothing wrong with having, there's nothing wrong with having nice things. I like nice stuff. You know, it's nothing wrong with that. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. But don't get so attached to it that if you lose it, it destroy you. Because everything that you have on this earth, sooner or later, you're going to lose it. Don't be so attached to it you can't separate from it. Like, for instance, somebody run into your car, if you're too attached to it, you're going to jump out and go to shoot, fight, all that kind of stuff. Am I? See, that's too, it's just too attached. And when that's, that's when stuff becomes your God. And you don't want to get caught up in that kind of foolishness. We, I went to a, I, well, yesterday, I went to one of my friend's brother-in-law's funeral. And I think everybody agreed that everything he had, he left it here. Had, had, had beautiful antique car, mint condition, but they were all sitting on the parking lot <laughs> when they took him to the grave. Beautiful mint, but see, you can't get so attached to stuff that you can't let it go. The other piece that destroy us and hurt us is that we desire. We have an inordinate desire for things that's not ours. That's when we go to stealing and killing and committing adultery. Another man's wife ain't your wife, you leave her alone. Or vice versa. That man is not your her, that man belong to somebody else. Leave him alone. Don't be desiring something that belongs to somebody else. Learn how to rejoice and appreciate what other people have. Learn how to encourage them. Say, you sure got a nice wife or a nice husband or whatever the case might be. Don't be going on talking about. I think. Now, I said all that, and I did, now I'm going to tell you why. Let me tell you why that's important to us this morning. What I've said to you about that was definitely true. Everything I just named to you, you have the capacity to do it. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But I want, let, me, let, me, let, me give you this. let me give you some things that we have to do. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward. Then I got a verse. I want to show you something that will revolutionize your life if you embrace it. There's a simple truth. You've heard it a thousand times, but you've got to get it and you've got to hold on to it. In my working with this little presentation, with this little piece, I came up with 12 things that this community need to do, that this church need to do. You don't know what it is? Thanks for asking, Mike. And when you start talking about what we need to do, we started getting quiet. That, that's because we don't like to, to do. We don't like that do part. Now listen to me. Nobody's going to come rolling into this community on some white horse as your savior. If you're going to get things done, it's gonna have to, we're going to have to take on this mentality, I will do it. Now here we go. One, love God, love the Lord our God. Two, honor our people. Three, decolonize our mind. Four, renew our mind. Five, build our community. Six, heal our family. Seven, develop our economy. Eight, govern ourselves. Nine, educate our children. Ten, know our history. Eleven, appreciate our culture. And twelve, protect our health.
And in our relationship with God, we have the knowledge, the wisdom, and the ability to accomplish all that we must accomplish in order to be healthy, spiritually, physically, socially, emotionally, intellectually, and financially. Right. Somebody say amen other than Carnegie. Amen. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Now, Pastor, how do you get all this power to do all of this? You got it because of last Sunday. You know what last Sunday was? Last Sunday was Easter. And Easter is about resurrection power. I wish I had somebody. That's all we think about. And it's a good thing. You need to think about being resurrected on the last day when Jesus comes back. But you need some resurrection now. If we get our mind resurrected, we still dead in the grave, mentally. Dr. Wright, Bobby Wright called it menticide. Y'all know what menticide is? Murdered in the mind. I wish I had somebody. You don't even hear me this morning. Menticide. Your mind, our mind, I'm saying our minds, I'm talking about, by the way, every black man, every black woman I know that's living in the, on, in the United States of America and probably around the world are victims of brainwashing. And every one of us is going to have to take responsibility for getting our minds cleared up. You, in other words, you ain't normal. We ain't normal. Because all of us have been socialized away from our Africanness. We've been abnormal so long that abnormal have become normal. And y'all know it's hard for black folks to be white folk. And y'all sure been trying hard. <laughs> y'all know. <laughs> Well, we've been working at this thing for 500 years and ain't quite got that. And the, and the, and the longer we work on this thing, boy, the, the more messed up we get. There's no reason why we should be in the mess that we're in today. If we were pursuing after what God has made us to be, we bought the okie doke. Yeah, we bought into it. I got to tell, my, I, I tell my, 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 my brothers, I got a few brothers. I got their PhDs and all that kind of stuff. And I, mean, I love them. And, but when I get on their case, I tell them, I said, man, see, you got your PhD. You sure enough messed up. <laughs> I said, you got the highest level of Eurocentrism. You do. And so to be quite honest about it, if you're not teaching the, the, the hard sciences like mathematics, you ain't no good to us. You better hear me. That's why, Rose Terry, you're going to have to start doing a whole lot of teaching and instructing in your own home if you're going to save your family and save this community. It ain't going to happen with us sitting around here waiting on somebody else to come and rescue up. You're going to have to find the way to carve out the time to spend time healing the hurt and brokenness in your family. And when you do that, you're going to see some major changes happening in this community. Your family, this community, no, is not going to change as long as we're sick. And let me tell you something I found out about crazy folks. Can I tell you what I found about crazy folk? <laughs> crazy folk think everybody is crazy but them. <laughs> <laughs> you get around people that, 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 that's really throwed off. 
I mean, they, they really think it's something wrong with, with them, with other folks that's not like them. Now, now, I say that, I'm saying that carefully, because all of us are crazy to a degree. <laughs> and that's why all of us going to have to get... We, I told my wife yesterday morning, Jean and I, we talked about, we were talking yesterday morning. I said, you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to humble ourselves, every one of us, and admit where we are. We're going to have to admit that we got problems here. And I'm talking about, I'm, I'm particularly talking about those of us who have been trained, those of us who have been educated. We are, to a large degree, part of the real problem in our community. And we don't have any original thinking anymore. We don't think, all we do is parrot what our master teach us. And we keep on, and, all, and the parrot and the master are always going to teach us that which is going to support his ideology, what he believes what's going to suit his case and advance his cause. Y'all know that's been ever since slavery, because they did that on the slave plantation, the overseer. The overseer, was con he, he was concerned about the master's well-being. They tell me when the master's house caught on fire, and he said, we house on fire. <laughs> and when he got sick, we be sick. That's a man. But that's the way we are. And we, and we, and we don't have, and we don't, we're not thinking straight. But Easter Sunday morning, where Jesus got up from the dead, yeah. if we embrace that concept, embrace the reality of the resurrection this morning, then we're on our way to victory. See, the resurrection causes us to transcend this world in which we live in and all the evil and all of the, all the distortions and all of the distractions. We rise above that. Can't hold us no longer. Because if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. That's what happened when the resurrection it's reality in your life. Also, you have to understand that when you resurrect it's real in your life, you understand that the kingdom of God is within you. And the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I want to add also, and power. The kingdom of God, when you, when you embrace the resurrection, it teaches us another important lesson that you don't have to depend upon your oppressor any longer to meet your need because Jesus, Paul teaches us that God will meet all of our needs according to his riches in glory. The resurrection teaches us who we are. We are men and women, boys and girls, created in the image and likeness of God. And that's reestablished. You don't have to take a back seat to anybody. But the resurrection also teaches us how to walk in humility and in love. We ain't got no time to be hating on folk. We ain't got no time to be disliking folk. We don't have time to be trying to get even with folk. We need to spend our time trying to redefine who we are. Get ourselves together. So we can be a mark in this world. We ain't got no time to be anti-nothing. But you ought to want to be pro who you are. I don't care what nobody say. You talk all this stuff to all you want to, but I'm pro-black. I love black folk. Now, now, I didn't say not one time I hate white folk. I said I love black folk. I don't have to be anti-white to be pro-black. Do I? I'm like the Apostle Paul now. 
Paul said, my heart desire for Israel that they might be saved. My heart desire is that black America might be saved. Now, you've got to remember now, Paul was sent to preach to the Gentile, but his heart desire, what he wanted more than anything else, was to see his own people saved. Like you take Fenster. In black America right now, we screwed up. Let me show you how we screwed up. You get the average black person that got a little money, got a little political clout, and got a little education. Nine chances out of ten, he fight for everybody but his own people. That's the reason why I got to tell y'all this, because God getting ready to bless some of y'all. More than some of y'all are blessed. You know you're blessed real good already, don't you? You know that, don't you? You know where you were five years ago, six years ago, ten years ago. You know how jacked up you were, and God pulled you out of jacked upness and set you down on solid ground. You know what I'm talking about. But God is going to take some of us even to another level, and some of us are going to have quarter million dollars or half a million dollars or a million dollars or whatever the case might be. As a matter of fact, you're going to be doing real, world, real good as far as the world is concerned. But what I want you to always remember, don't you ever forget where you came from. Don't you forget the rest of us who are still over here fighting. As a matter of fact, you come and join and be our partner and try to help us to rise up and get out of the mess that we're still in. I wish I had somebody. <laughs> I'm glad I have people like Floyd in here. Because Floyd is committed to it. His first million he make, half of it is going to be spent right back in the community. I mean, I'm telling you what I know. And I've already seen people begin to do it. And you got people who will invest hundreds and thousands, like we've done on this building fund drive. We, we, uh, uh, in nine years, you guys have paid for this property. I mean, you know, what that, you know what that says to me? That you're willing to take out of what you do have. You might not have a million dollars. You might not have a half million, all that kind of stuff. But what you do have, you're willing to invest back in your community so there will be something here that reflects your love for God and for God's people. And you've done that. And people can say what they want to say and criticize all they want to criticize, but you have made a statement to this community that as God bless me, I'm going to bless my community. Yeah. Now, the word is out that the city of Dallas uh, funded all that we've accomplished here so far. And the word is out that uh, somebody in North Dallas has given Pastor Charles all this money, and he's taking it down there. And, you know. and you know what I started doing? I stopped even responding to that kind of foolishness. Because it ain't nothing but foolishness. In other words, I'm going to tell you what has happened. I'm going to tell you what's happening around this city. Most of the people north of Interstate 30 don't believe that you have enough going for yourself to take care of your own business. Wow. They, you know what they believe? They believe that if anything good happened in South Dallas, somebody else had to do it for them. That's the kind of predicament we have a, that, 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 that we're into. It ain't going to happen, not long with Pastor Charles on the watch. I was telling the, the Deacon and Deaconess this morning, I would rather, and I had not, I'll tell you all something, I've been decolonizing. I've, I've been, I'm getting healed right here. And I, ain't, I ain't quite there yet. 
I want to do, I want to do some, I want to do some uh, a disclaimer here before I say this. Because I know some of y'all are still there. But, I'm, but, I, but I've come a little bit further out of it because of the intensity of my study and working with people. And for a while, I'm, one thing that God has, has taught me is to be patient with his people and give his people time to evolve. Am I right or wrong? Uh, but I told our deacons and deaconess this morning, and I meant this, and I'm going to say it to you guys, and I meant it, I'm trying to say it with passion. I would rather eat a crumb that provided by me and these people than eat a filet mignon steak from the table of those who hurt us. Let them keep their steak. Everywhere we go, people want to give us handouts and walk on us at the same time. And those days got to come to an end. And we got to stand up and be the people of God. The God I serve is no respecter of person. I know I'm right. Let me give you this number one sit down. Now, why did you say all that, E.D. Charles? Now, here's the one lesson I want you to get today. The one lesson I want you to get, I want you to leave here, and, and I want you to, it's couched in all that I've said. Yeah. The key for you today is to know where God is. Yeah. And here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make it your practice. You're going to have to make it your daily ritual that you acknowledge the presence of the living God with you and in you. You know what I'm going to tell you what that means to me. I don't know, it might not mean nothing to you, but it means something to me. When I think about who God is, I think about he's omnipotent, meaning he got all power in me. Omnipresent everywhere in me. Omniscient, know everything in me. He's infinite, meaning that he is without bound. Unlimited in me. Huh? He is immutable, meaning that he can never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, for me, that's true. So that means this. I got the power I need to do what I need to do. I have the knowledge to know what I need to know. I have the partner so I'll never have to walk alone. And I don't never have to worry about him running out on me. So you better hear me this morning. Somebody going to get liberated here. So you with me on that? Now this is what you came to hear me say this morning. Let, let, let me give you, let me give you this here. Before God, God sent Joshua into the promised land. He said, Joshua, I want you to get my people ready to go. Moses dead now. And this is what God told, told Joshua. He said, Joshua, you I got work for you to do. Right. And this is what he told Joshua. He said, Joshua, I want you to go and sell my people in the land. And this is what you're going to have to get to come to grip with. We are wandering in the land. And God said to Joshua, you're going to prosper when you get there because I'm going to be with you. Well, uh, 
path forever thou goest, I will be with you. And if the God of this universe that made everything holds it all together, knows everything, never changes, if he is with us, what do we have to fear? Am I right or wrong? That's what the text said. The text said, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Two things, two things you need to know this morning. One is that you cannot be strong and have courage and at the same time be afraid and dismayed. One or the other got to go. And the, and the Hebrew writer put it this way. He that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is the rewarder of those that diligently, not just seek, but diligently, above everything else, diligently focus on him. Let me ask you a question. What is your problem this morning? What is your problem? Don't hold your hands up and don't tell me. But I'm asking this rhetorically. What is your problem? Well, if you worried about it, your problem is your God. Because your problem is bigger than the God you claim to know. Because if you understood that whatever your problem is and wherever you go, the God who got all power in his hand and knows everything and everywhere will raise you above your situation. Then you can watch and say, victory is mine, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I wish I had somebody this morning. <laughs> that's what you do when you know. That's when you said that faith yeah. is the substance of things hoped for. Yes, sir. The evidence of things not seen. A man or a woman that got power don't have to always see the end result. They know the one that sees the end result. Now, I'm going to give you one more because you need the verses. You need scripture to help you. I'm going to give you something that, I'm going to tell you why I preach. See, I, I'm, and most of the time I don't have a crowd like this on Sunday morning. Most of y'all be looking. I mean, <laughs> boy, I tell you, sometimes uh, preaching can be hard because uh, when you're trying to get people to straighten up and be righteous. You know, you tell me, look, you can't be going with that man's wife. He don't want to shoot you. Can't be smoking and selling our children all that dope. They want, they want, they want, they, they want to do your, they, they, they think you get in their business. You tell me, man, you need to take your money home to your wife. That ain't none of your business. You need, to, you, need to, you need to train your children and help them to grow up to be responsible people. And sometimes when, when, I, when I talk about stuff like that, y'all, your mouth get long. I tell you, I smell Clara's Club on you this morning. I know you've been down to Jock. You just left Jock play. Lady Love, something like that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Lady Love got so popular, they got Lady Love one and two. 
<laughs> Lynn, come leave out a little love and up in the choir. <laughs> no, they, they want to rock. All up in the choir. Just out of Lady Love. Um, you know that Lady Love, uh, uh, OBB be singing, but no, no, uh, uh, what the guy name? The thrill is gone. You <laughs> ever that just crooning? Now look, and then come in here on Sunday morning, and they, 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 doing like this. <laughs> Y'all didn't know I knew that, didn't you? Let me tell you why I know that. Can I tell you how I know that? Because I used to be, now I've never been to Lady Love, but they had some Lady Love in Houston before I came here. And I know what Lady Love's that kind of environment, I used to stick my head through the door. <laughs> Y'all got to remember that God saved all of us from something. Yeah, God brought every one of us out of something. He brought some of y'all out the dope house. Brought some, some of you was, was customers. And some of you were vendors. Am I right or wrong? I know I'm right. Let me give you this right quick, what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah said something so powerful. Jeremiah said this. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed thee, See, God said, I knew you before you was even formed in the belly. He said, I knew thee. God been knowing you a long time. And before thou camest out of the womb, he said, I sanctified you. That means he set you apart. And then he said, and I ordained you. That means that he gave you your responsibility your life work. He said before you, when you were still in your mother, before you were even put in your mother's womb. That's what the scripture said. So God been knowing you a long, long, long time. He said, I ordain you, talking to Jeremiah, to be a prophet. And then he said, then this is what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah said, this, this is what we come in. And all of us, God's ordained and it's something for all of us to do. Then Jeremiah said this. Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am just a child. I can't do this, God. Now, think about it for a minute. Think about all the stuff that you've already said, I can't do this. I'm not able to do this. I can't be a good mother. I can't do this. I can't be a father. I can't do this. I can't work on this kind of environment. I can't do this. I can't teach. I can't do all, all the I can'ts do. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah, but God, here's what God counted count with. He says, but the Lord said to me, say not I'm a child. For thou shalt go to all I send you. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee. There it is again. Don't be afraid to face your challenge in life, because the very presence of the living God will be with you, to walk with you, talk with you, and give you power to fulfill your purpose in life. You can be a good wife. You can be a good husband. You can be a good father. You can be a good teacher. You can be good at whatever God calls you to be because God promises if you obey him, I will be with you. And so when you get up before you walk out the door, when you get ready to go out into this old mad, evil, demon-driven world, you need to sit quietly in your living room with the lights turned off. Meditate in your heart. God is with me. 
and walk out that door in the name of Jesus, anointed by the Holy Ghost and guided by truth and watch your enemies begin to fall. Not because you're so good, but because the same God that raised Jesus from the dead on Easter Sunday morning, he will raise you above your circumstances on Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and the next Sunday and every day of your life because he promised never to leave you nor forsake you. He'd be with you always, even to the end of the age. May God bless you this morning, and may God forever keep you. <laughs>